Class of 2023, four-star Brady Dunlap. He's a very elite player and arguably the best shooter in the nation. You're sitting there and you, you think you play well because you scored a little bit while hurt and then you start feeling those offers are losing, you're losing them. And I started to get to the point where like, I'm not getting any calls. I'm like, well, gosh, what am I gonna do? You know, which was, which was hard. I'm gonna go prove myself. I'm gonna bet on myself here, even after everything I've been through. And it's, it's, it's worked out for me. Notre Dame has landed an out of nowhere commitment from Brady Dunlap. Breaking news here on CBS Sports HQ from College Basketball, where Notre Dame head coach Mike Bray will retire at the end of the season. It was a shock for sure, but just out of control what I can control. So I was like, okay, well, he's going to retire. He's not going to be the coach. I really committed to him. I love Notre Dame. I love the campus. I love the environment. I love the fans. I think it's great. It's a great school, you know, academic-wise. But I love Coach Bray. And in basketball, for my position, my skill set, you need a coach that uses me right. And me not knowing who the next coach of Notre Dame is, that's when I decided to, like, like, like decommit and ask for my withdrawal from the N NLI. Oh, that's most bad looks. That's bad I moved out here from North Carolina and I went to a middle school at Heritage Christian when I was being recruited. I was a top middle school player out here and I was being recruited by a lot of different high profile high schools and that's when I first heard about Harvard Westlake but I decided to go to a local high school by where I lived at Hart High to play football my freshman year. But after that year, I wanted more of a uh, high-level experience in terms of high school and play at the open division level. And Harvard Wesley gave me the opportunity to do that, and Coach Rebibo gave me the best uh, chance to, to go and compete at that level, so that's how I ended up there. Following his sophomore season, Dunlap and Harvard Westlake would hit the road and play at Section 7 in Arizona, where Dunlap would play in front of many college coaches. We go to Section 7, in which I play, and I play pretty well. I get offers, pretty notable offers in that tournament alone from like Kansas and Xavier, and I started picking up interest from like UCLA and USC and like um, schools of like the upper echelon that I've been dreaming of playing for. And it was, it was a blessing to get those offers and that attention. And, um, and then I, I headed my way into Team Why Not, which I played on the, the 16U team that won in one Peach Jam. We, I was with Dusty and Jared and, and Kylan and the, those boys that, and, and it, was, it was a fun experience. They, they got a ton of clout from it. I was in the background of TikToks. You'll see me back there. I didn't get as much attention as I was hoping for. I was hoping to be like, all right, who that was, who's that guy? But I didn't get that. <laughs> but but um, I was there, man. I was there. I played pretty well. I, uh, I came off the bench. I was a six man. I, was, I wasn't expecting to be the six man. I thought I was going to go in there and, and earn a starting job. I didn't. But I ended up in my, I averaged like 14 or 15 minutes a game. I was pretty efficient. I averaged like 13 points a game per 32 minutes. I was like, pretty high up in their in efficiency ratings. And then I, uh, I go and take a test heading into the Peach Jam playoffs because it was weird. It was like a 14 day thing because of COVID. And we're all getting tested for COVID and I'm on my way to the game. We have to test before the game. They swab me and I have COVID and I just have to sit in the hotel room and I have to watch my boys play in these high profile games with like high, like so many coaches that were there like Kentucky and and Duke and North Carolina. I was born in North Carolina. Like North Carolina was a dream for me. Just to even have that opportunity would have been great. And just to see them like play against CP3 and Aiden Holloway and Robert Dillingham and like all those boys that you get good publicity if you play well in those games. And I just just sit there in my hotel room with Jurian and watch them on my phone and on live stream. Like it was a really hard time for me. Harvard Westlake season would come up just short of a championship as they lost to Corona Centennial in the CIF Open Division Section Championship. Shortly after, they'd fall to Sierra Canyon in the state playoffs. That summer, Brady would run with Strive for Greatness in EYBL, and with his senior season just months away, Harvard Westlake would gear up for Section 7 out in Glendale, Arizona. My second Section 7, um, so we had a practice, and I come down and get a high ankle sprain like a week before. And I had every, I got a ton of coaches texting me, a ton of coaches calling me going into that. I was going to be fresh. I was coming off of that Indianapolis session where I averaged like 17, 18 points a game with Strive. 
and it, it was really painful. I was waking up at six, going to get treatment at seven, and I'd go eat, and I'd go back at more treatment, and then I'd ice. It was, it, was a, it was a big process just to get there. I'm doing anything to get these offers at this point. I say I have a Kansas offer, but they're done not texting me anymore. I've lost that. I've lost USC. I've lost UCLA. They've been texting me. They've stopped texting me, and it's not even their fault. I just been... I didn't play well in Vegas, and sorry for greatness, they couldn't see me because they weren't there at the, at the sessions, and this was my big break, section seven, everyone goes to section seven. And, but I wasn't moving well, I was scoring, and then the same thing happens, you probably saw me on Strictly B-Ball, we beat the Boozer Bros, we beat, um, we beat True and Mountain Point, Mountain Point and I had a game winner in that game, which was, which was a fun experience. That was, that was, that was a cool shot, a cool moment for me. But, even still, all these coaches were there and seeing me, but I was hurt in my lateral movement and my jumping, and it was not the same as I usually am. My athletic ability wasn't the same. And then we go into that Corona Centennial game. My ankle was, after icing and playing on it, a ton of minutes on it, I have to go into this Corona Centennial game on crutches. So I'm on crutches, crutching myself into the gym, and then I get taped and I go out there and I'm limping while I'm playing. I'm on prescription ibuprofen in that game. I can't even push off it. I play bad. I have like 10 points in the whole game, and it's, it, was, it was rough. Missed a lot of shots because I couldn't even jump. And then after they saw me hurt, they didn't know I was hurt because I was playing through it, which might have been a bad decision, but I didn't want to leave my brothers out there like alone. And I wanted to win games for them. We got to the championship, which was pretty big time for our program. And we ended up losing. But like, it was just, it went, like, you're sitting there and you, you think you play well because you scored a little bit while hurt. And then you start feeling those offers are losing. You're losing them. And I started to get to the point where like, I'm not getting any calls. I'm like, well, gosh, what am I gonna do? You know, which was, which was hard. Uh, so it's hard, it's kind of hard to talk about just cause like you've worked so hard and I've, I've had a lot of early mornings at like 5 a.m. with my dad, going to the beach, going through ladders, going jumping rope, like lifting weights by myself. I'm, I'm, I'm doing yoga classes just to become more flexible and so I can help my ankle so I don't have it happen in the future. And even when I was young at, at North Carolina, I was working out with NC State players, and I, I'm looking back at all this hard work. I'm like, did it really pay off? Because I'm going into my senior season, and I have Division One offers, but it's not like where I wanted to play. And I know it sounds con like conceited, and like like not. I don't know if the conceit is the right word, but it sounds like I don't know what, what the right word is in that situation. But it's not where I wanted to be, and not where I think I deserved to be, which was which was hard for me. How, how you kind of drag yourself out of that um, sad state where you kind of in a sense of panic, but also just kind of depressed at what has happened the previous, previous summer. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really hard to, to get yourself out of it, mainly because a lot of basketball players, I suffer from it too, it's like your, your mental health is kind of all predicated on how well you play. Because I wasn't playing well, it wasn't great. Like I was, was super down on myself. I don't want to say depressed because that's, that's serious, but no, I was super down on myself, super sad. And, but meditating helped me a lot, reading books helped me a lot. I started to realize how really unimportant things really are. Just go out and have fun. Like I have offers, like be grateful for what you have. So I was, I was just being grateful for what I had when I went up there. I saw that edge on my, or that chip on my shoulder. I had the edge to me that I wanted to go out and kill these guys that were turning ranked above me. And, and I thought I did that pretty well. And once I started getting healthy and started playing well, then everything changes. Harvard Westlake would go on a 16 game winning streak to start the season. In that span, they traveled to Texas, Arkansas, and Arizona and picked up big wins. With the Wolverines having a huge year and being one of the most dominant teams in California, they would enter the state open division playoffs and be seated as the number three seed behind St. John Bosco and Corona Centennial. Harbor Westlake's first matchup in the state playoffs would be against St. John Bosco, a team that had ended their Southern Section Championship hopes just weeks before. State is bigger. Like, if you lose, you're out. Open division, it's still pool play. You can lose and still play. Like, state, if I lose, that's my last high school game of, of, my, of my entire high school career. And it will be super sad to, like, never play with those guys again. And I want to, like, go out and win my last game with them and celebrate with them. I'd rather be a state champion than a CIF champion at the end of the day. Like if I sell, if I go to a, a school across the country and I'm like, yeah, I'm a CIF champion, they don't really know what that is. But if I say like, oh yeah, I'm a state champion of California in the highest level, that's, that would mean that everyone knows what that means. So like that's, that's kind of where our mind's at, where we're focused and we're, we're totally shifted our focus to state and we're, we're coming for next in state. We're not gonna, if we're gonna lose, we're, we're losing, giving it our best shot, giving it playing hard, playing with passion. 
we're losing coming at your necks as opposed to losing being complacent. So I uh, obviously I want him to go out and win the state, and and uh, I think he um, loves. He's somebody who who dives into his team. He dives into his coach, and there's that love for them that's intense. And I think that he wants it mainly, probably more for them than he does himself. Um, and so I I want him to go win that state, and it's been a dream from his uh, since we started out playing here. Getting set for the open state CIF playoffs here in Bellflower, California. Number three, Harvard Westlake is taking on number two, St. John Bosco. And in a huge rematch in that these two teams just played a few weeks ago with St. John Bosco coming out on top, giving Harvard Westlake their second loss of the season. Here's Perry, he'll drive, finds Hinton inside, and Robert Hinton with a nice spin around layup to start the scoring off for both teams. Jack Turner drives, kicks into the corner, five-star LZ Harrington. Book it for LZ Harrington. Ori gets on the left wing. Three pointer is good for Ori, and he's on the board. Here's Trent Perry. He drives, drops it off to Jacob Huggins, and Huggins rises up for the dunk. Here's Turner working on Ori. Turner loses the ball. It's stolen. Harvard Westlake gets it, and play is blown dead immediately. A technical foul is called on Turner right away. Let's take a look at what happened. Ori is pissed, and and oh wow, Turner steps on Christian Ori. Dunlap will go up with it, and he'll lay it in. Four-star Trent Perry pushing it up the court over to Dunlap. Dunlap's three. Book it for Brady Dunlap. Three and the foul, but a little bit of concern right now as he's rolling around on the ground holding his ankle and is very slow to get up for Harvard Wesley. Dunlap is hobbling over to the free throw line. And that's not a pretty sight if you're Harvard Westlake at all. Over to Ori. Another three. Yes! Or he hits it. He's on fire. Harrington over to Meadows. Meadows to McCoy. McCoy is locked. And no, if that was called, it'll go on Brady Dunlap. Dunlap fires. It's off. Ball is knocked around. Picked up by Turner. Here's Turner. Turner flying up the court. Over to Bonham. Kate Bonham lays it in. St. John Bosco cutting the lead. Harry trying to get the ball. And Hamani is called for an offensive foul. Miri Meadows is all over the place right now for the Braves. Over Westlake up two, let's see what they can do. Hermenia drives over to Huggins. Nice two-man game as Huggins lays it in. Game on the line, Harrington kicks it to Turner. Turner drives and offensive foul is called Christian Ori with another huge play for Harvard Westlake. The Wolverines take down St. John Bosco and they'll advance to play the number two team in the nation in the next round of the state playoffs, Corona Centennial. Here we are in the regional finals of the Open Division State Playoffs. Harvard Westlake taking on number one Centennial here in Corona, California. Centennial has been one of the best teams in the nation year-round and is led by a five-star Duke commit Jared McCain. Huge matchup, which is must-see TV out here in Corona. Centennial hasn't lost to a California team in nearly two years. That last team to beat them was Harvard Westlake, and Harvard Westlake is looking to avenge themselves from last year's Southern Section CIF playoffs and Section 7 as well. Here's Perry back now. Price Perry fades and hits it and gets the foul. Trent Perry starting the game off right for the Wolverines. Oh, it's stolen by Hinton. Here's Hinton up the court, racing with McCain. Hinton lays it up and in before Williams gets there. In the drive and oh, a crafty finish by the Duke commit. Mania tries to lose McBride. Good defense by McBride. Mania to Perry. Perry a three. Trent Perry with a three pointer for Harvard Westlake. Freeney. And Freeney answers back. Here's Nicholas Mania, the four star sophomore, working on the five star senior. And Mania wins the battle against the Duke commit. Dunlap gets in the corner off the handoff. Book it for Brady Dunlap. McBride in the corner. McBride hits a three. McCain will drive, fade away, and just a tough shot by Jared McCain. McCain once again drives and he tosses it in. Jared McCain is heating up with some words said to the bench. Now Dunlap, his three-pointer once again, Brady Dunlap is heating up. And you find Dunlap inside and Dunlap dunks it. Menya gets it back, three-pointer, yes, Nicholas Hamenya. 
Follows loose. Ori dives and it goes off of Eric Breeny. Christian Ori bringing the energy and Harvard Westlake is up early. Penny on the break. McCain pulls up his three pointer. No good. Followed by Devin Williams for the dunk. Penny trying to make a run, being down double digits right now. Follows loose. Trent Perry three pointer. Yes, Trent Perry adds onto the lead. Now Dunlap in the corner. Dunlap hits the shot. Here's Jimenia. Jimenia working on McBride. Jimenia fades and he hits. What a game so far from Nicholas Jimenia. Harvard Westlake is up big. Perry drives right. Perry finds Jimenia. Can he hit another? Yes, he can. Nicholas Jimenia and Harvard Westlake are putting on a show. Dunlap in the corner from Hinton. Dunlap gets the three to go. They cannot miss right now. Ride drives, is blocked by Huggins, saved, and a foul will be called. Harvard Westlake bringing the energy. Dunlap will waste time as Laureen lead by 19. Under a minute, Dunlap floater no good. Put back by Jacob Huggins, and Huggins says good night. Brady Dunlap and Harvard Westlake are just one win away from an open division state title. Yeah, I don't even I don't even have anything to prove to myself. I'm I'm confident right now in who I am. Even if I play bad, I'm it's bound to happen. It happens. But I'm I'm you know I'm confident where I am. It's more so I want to prove to my team that we can do this. Like let's win let's go win a state championship. And I want to say that the goal the goal is to win a state championship, and it is. But if we go out there and we play as hard as we possibly can, play with a lot of passion, and and we just make a little make mistakes going hard or just miss shots and end up losing, and we lose like that, I think it's a success. I think it's a successful senior year for me. Um, we got a Mission League championship. Even if we lose, I want to lose going out like that. Like, that's how I want to go out. I don't want to go out the way we lost to Bosco. I want to go out like we are, we're hell on wheels. That's how, that's how I want to look at us. And, I, and yeah, the ultimate goal is to win a state championship. And that's, that's where all of our heads are at. And let's get a ring for our coaches and my teammates and have a memory for the rest of our lives. Just keep humming. Hmm? Just keep humming. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get like a tougher like yeah. angle, bro. I'll pan, I'll slowly pan to, the, to, to Nika. Slowly pan, get him, get him some legs. Here, 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 here comes, here comes the pan. Ready? Three, two, panic, panic, panic. Hold the shot, hold the shot, center it. Zoom in a little, zoom in. Fix your hair, Out a boy. Draw a line, draw a line, draw a line. Out a boy, there it is, that's the shot. It's the day that both these teams have waited for the state championship in open division in California. Here we are in Sacramento, California, get set to start, and we will see who will be crowned the best team in the state. Number three, Harvard Westlake, will take on number three, St. Joseph, who is led by five-star sophomore Tunde Yesifu. Getting started, it's five-star Tunde Yesifu going up against Princeton and Jacob Huggins on the jump ball, and St. Joseph will start off. 
inside the Hamilton. Hamilton moves it, tries to save. Huggins comes up with it. Now Amenia, Amenia up to Dunlap. Dunlap will finish with the easy layup. Here's Price, he'll drive. Price, off balance shot, no good. Rebounded by Hamilton. Caden Hamilton's right there to put it back in. Hinton with a tough take on the other end. And the Harvard commit is making an impact early. Here's Luis Marin, and he drives, spins, and gets the layup to go. Crafty move from the senior. Brady Dunlap working on Darian Mensa, drives left, pulls up and hits. Brady Dunlap with a nice shot, and Harvard Westlake leads by three at the end of the first quarter. Huggins gives it to Dunlap. Dunlap goes left, pulls up from three. Look it for Brady Dunlap. Marin fades, tough shot over Trent Perry, and he gets it to go. Harvard Westlake up four. Over to Ori. Ori for three in the corner. Yes! Christian Ori gets in on the scoring action. Yesifu guarded by Ori. Steps back. Three pointer for Tunde Yesifu. Big shot from the sophomore. And we're going to halftime with Harvard Westlake holding a four point lead over St. Joe's. Looks inside, finds Huggins. Huggins takes some contact, no foul, but he'll get the layup to go. There with the rebound. Here comes Harvard Westlake, fires it up to Brady Dunlap. Dunlap waits and lays it in. Now Perry drives. Tough shot, no good. Rebounded by Huggins. Put up and in. And one for Jacob Huggins. Dunlap. Dunlap will drive. He finds Huggins. Huggins regathers and dunks it. It's been all Harvard Westlake this quarter. Here's Yesu. Can he get something to go? No. Rebounded by Perry. Here's Perry up the court. Perry to Dunlap. Dunlap. Back to Perry. To Huggins. Huggins with another dunk. Harvard Westlake has taken over and they lead by 12. Hinton keeps it in bounds. Hinton will drive. He goes up and almost catches the body, but just can't get the finish to go. He will get fouled and go to the free throw line. Trent Perry will drive and oh, such a tough finish for the junior, but he gets it to go. Harvard Westlake back up by 10. Harvard Westlake has weathered the storm up to this point. The running clock in a basket will just about seal it. And there it is, Jacob Huggins lays it in. Harvard Westlake is under a minute away. They'll count down the clock. And Harvard Westlake has done it. They are state champions. practices together and I think it just made us all super close and uh, like I said like we're all we all can hang out with each other one-on-one -on -one. like there's no groups or pockets in this team we're all just a one big one big family and you can really see that out there on the court like uh, we're just we're all supporting each other we're all each other's number one fans and yeah it's just truly truly a uh, true thankful to be a part of something so special there's a strong case that the mission league is the best league in Southern California we've won it five years in a row so we started it already it's been going in my opinion um, winning the Open is a whole other beast. Um, just in, a lot of things have to align, right? Um, you have to be injury-free. You have to have a lot of things that kind of go your way. 
But that being said, the foundation and the, 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 the desire to grow every year and get better, it's not just them, it's our staff too. Um, and I think that's why we continue to evolve. Players get better year in and year out, and so do our coaches, which forces our players to get better again, you know, and continue to get better. So me and my family have been really close our whole lives, mainly just because we've moved so many times and we don't really have like super close friends that we can always talk to, like just right next door because we always move and we always have to leave them. So we've kind of been like each other's best friends. What's your, what's the biggest thing you look for when trying to commit to a school? The head coach, like, like I said, like, this, he, he controls the playing time at the end of the day, and him investing in me, I'll invest in him, and I want to have a guy that I want to go to war for and work my, work my tail off for. That's kind of always who I've kind of been as a person. So that's, that's the single most important thing is, is the head coach for me. Thank you for watching Grounded with Brady Dunlap. Stay tuned for episode two, where we talk about Brady's recruitment and more about his unique story.